Donors, welcome. Uh, in Form 3, Lesson 3, we were dealing with the relationship between relative formula mass and the mole. In Lesson 4, we are dealing with empirical formula and molecular formula. So let's start with empirical formula. We are told empirical formula shows the simplest whole number ratio in which atoms combine to form a compound. For example, we are told when magnesium was burnt in air, the following results were obtained. Okay, we are having empty mass of empty crucible ballast lead, which is 19.52 gram. Then we are having mass of crucible ballast lead ballast magnesium, which is 20.36 gram. We are having again mass of crucible ballast lead plus magnesium oxide. We are going to get 20.92 gram. So we have the mass of magnesium. We have the mass of magnesium oxide and we have the mass of oxygen. So during the exam, they may give you there uh, a dash. Then you are told complete the table. You can be told to complete the table. So if we want to get the mass for magnesium, first of all, we will just take the mass of mag uh, crucible ballast lead ballast magnesium, which is 20.36. 20 20.36. Then we subtract from the mass of empty crucible plus lead, which is 19.52. Here, we are going to get the mass for that magnesium. So this will be 4. Then we are going to have 8 there. We are going to have 0. So it will be 0 0.84 grams. So during the exam, if uh, they give you here the mass of magnesium, the mass of magnesium oxide, and the mass of oxygen dash, 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 and you are told complete the table, you just do it like this. So we can get the mass of magnesium oxide because we have here mass of crucible ballast lead plus magnesium oxide, which is 20.92. So we subtract this mass from the mass of empty crucible ballast lead, which is 19.52, so that mass of uh, empty crucible will go with mass of crucible and mass of lead will go with mass of lead. We are going to remain with mass of magnesium oxide. So there we are going to have 20.92, which is the mass of uh, crucible plus lead plus magnesium oxide, subtracted by the mass of empty crucible plus lead, which is 19.52. 19.52. So here, 19.52. When we subtract these two, we are going to get 1.4 gram, which is the mass of magnesium oxide. Then we can get the mass of oxygen because we have the mass of mag magnesium oxide and we have the mass of magnesium. So, so that mass of magnesium can go with mass of, mag mass of magnesium will remain with mass of magnesium, uh, mass, of, mass of oxygen alone. So it will be 1.4 minus 0 0.84. Here we are going to get 0 0.56. We are going to get 0 0.56 as the mass of oxygen. Okay, next we are told from the experiment result given above determining the empirical formula of the compound formed when magnesium burns in air or burns in oxygen. So in bracket, we are given the relative atomic mass of magnesium and oxygen, which is 16, I mean 24 and 16, respectively. So the first step, when you are told do the empirical formula or determine or calculate the empirical formula of a compound, there are some steps or a way that we are going to do. First of all, we have to get elements, um, the reacting atoms, um, the reacting elements. So the reacting elements are one, magnesium and oxygen. So next we get the symbols of these elements that are reacting. So magnesium is written Mg, then oxygen is written O. Thereafter, we have to go to get the mass because here we were dealing with data and they were giving us the mass of magnesium as 0 0.84 as you can see. And we have the mass of oxygen as 0 0.56. So we record this in the table here. So mass of uh, magnesium is 0 0.84. The mass of oxygen is 0 0.56. Then we have the molecular mass of magnesium. It is given in the bracket 24. Then that of oxygen is 16. Next, we have to get number of moles or moles. Moles is given by mass of a molar mass. So the mass of a molar mass, here we are going to get 0 0.035. Then here, the same. We do the moles. That is the mass, which is 0 0.56 divided by 16. 
we get 0 0.035. Thereafter, we are supposed to get the mole ratio. Mole ratio between that magnesium and oxygen. So the number of moles of magnesium was 0 0.035 and the one for oxygen was 0 0.035. So that means we are supposed to take, first of all, the mass of this magnesium, which is 0 0.035, then divided by the smallest uh, moles in these two. Here, although they are the same, but in case you see two which are different, you just divide it by the one that's less moles. Okay, here they are the same, so we are going to put over 0 0.035, we are going to get one here, and here the same, 0 0.035 divided by 0 0.035. So we're going to get 1. So that means to write the empirical formula, to write the empirical formula, we are going to write Mg, the mole ratio here is 1, then O, the mole ratio here is 1. So we cannot write 1, 1, 1 is just hidden. So we're not going to write. So Lanas, you can confirm whether your answer is correct or not using the formula that we have learned in Form 2. Writing, I'm determining the, chemi the chemical formula of a, of a compound. So, formed when magnesium reacts with oxygen. What is the uh, valency of magnesium? It is 2. The valency of oxygen is 2. So, when you interchange, 2 will go. This other 2 will go. There's a common factor. We can divide by 2, 1, then by 2, 1. So, the formula formed when magnesium reacts with oxygen will be MgO. You can confirm this with what you have gotten using the empirical formula. So that's how we are going to do empirical formula. We go to example two. Here, this example, they have given us data, experimental data, but these other examples, they are going to just give us now words. So we are told a compound weighing 42 grams was found to contain 12 grams of magnesium, 6 grams carbon, and the rest oxygen. So we are told determine the empirical formula of the compound. Okay. So the elements that are reacting here include magnesium. They have given us magnesium here. Then we have carbon and the rest were oxygen. So magnesium, carbon, and oxygen were our elements. So the chemical symbol for magnesium, carbon, and oxygen is like that. The next we are having the mass. The mass of magnesium was 12. It is given here 12 grams magnesium. The mass of carbon is 6. It is given 6 grams carbon. And the rest was oxygen. So if the compound was weighing 42 grams, that means 42 minus 12 plus this 6, which will give you 18, when you subtract 42 minus 18, will give you 24. Because this, what we are, you are supposed to know is that when you take 12, you add 6, you add 24, they are supposed to be equal to 42, because that is the, the mass of the combo. Okay. The molar mass of magnesium is 24, given the bracket. The one for carbon is 12, and oxygen is 16. Next, let's get the number of moles. So we get the number of moles of magnesium by mass over molar mass. We get 0 0.5. The one for carbon, mass which is 6, divided the molar mass, which is 12, we get 0 0.5. The one for oxygen, the same, mass over molar mass. The mass was 24, then the molar mass was 16. We get 1.1. Thereafter, we get the mole ratio. Check here. The mole ratio here, we are going to have, first of all, 0 0.05. Then we divide by this three, the one that's less, the least. So the least is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, we get 1. And here the same, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, we get 1. But here I have 1.5 divided by 0 0.5, because 0 0.5 was the least moles. So I'm going to get here 3. So to write the empirical formula, I'm going to have M g1 i don't write one we don't write one in chemistry c1 we don't write one then o3 so mg c o3 this one hidden this one hidden okay we move example three an oxide of silicon was found to contain 47 percent by mass silicon in the previous example we are given mass but here we are given the percentage composition by mass of silicon what is the empirical formula of the oxide of the oxide of silicon. So the RM of silicon is 28, the one for oxygen is 16. Okay, we start the same elements. The elements are silicon and oxygen. The chemical symbol of silicon and oxygen are as follow. The percentage composition for silicon is 47. Then that means the one for oxygen, we say 100 minus 47, which is 53%. So thereafter, we get the number of moles. Number of moles is given by mass of a molar mass. So here we have not been given mass, but we have we have we have given percentage composition by mass so we say foot 7 divided by 22 that foot 7 will be your mass 
okay 1.68 that's what we're going to get there so here 53 divided by 53 over 16 we get 3.31 there so let's go next to the mold ratio this two this one is the one that's small so 1.68 divided by 1.68 we get one but in this other side we are having 3.31 divided by 1.68 it will be equal to 1.97, something like that. So we can round it to 2. Okay. The empirical formula there will be SI1. We don't write one in chemistry. Then we are going to get O2. That's the O2 there. So that will be silicon peroxide. You can confirm this by just knowing the one for form 2. Silicon peroxide, silicon is having a valence of 4, oxygen a valence of 2. When you interchange, you are going to have 2, 4. Divide because there's a common factor there, you are going to get SiO2. That will be the chemical symbol for silicon peroxide. So here you're having SiO2. Okay, after that, question number four. Question number four, we are told the percentage of an oxide of iron is 70%. Iron and 30% oxygen. Determine it is empirical formula. Iron Fe is equal to 56, that's the relative atomic mass, and the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So we do the same procedure. We talk about the elements. The elements there are iron and oxygen, the chemical symbol for iron Fe, then the one for oxygen is O, then their percentage composition for iron is 70, the one for oxygen is 30. It's given up there. Then we get the number of moles. We say mass, which is you represent for you percentage composition by mass, 70 over 56, I get 1.25. The other side, I have 30 over 16, I'm going to get 1.875 as my number of moles. So get the mole ratio. Mole ratio is given by uh, this mole, which you have here, 1.25, divided by these two, the one that's less or the one that's small or the one that have low moles or less moles. So we're going to have 1.25 over 1.25. I will get here 1. So we're going to get there 1. Then here, 1.875 divided by 1.25, we are going to get 1.5. So here, we cannot round this to 2. We cannot round it to 2 because we are told you only round a mole ratio, which is 1.9, something like that. You can round it to 2. But if you have something to do with 1.5, you have to put something that you can multiply a number that can give you now a whole number so the simplest number to multiply 1.5 to give you a whole number is 2 so you multiply here by 2 then you do the same you also multiply here by 2 so 1 times 2 will give you 2 then here 1.5 times 2 will give you now 3 so in case the mole ratio you get 1 on this side and you get 1.6 on this side you have to look away where you can remove this 6.6 .6 and you make it now a whole number okay what you can do is you can multiply here by 5, you can multiply here by 5. So this will be 5, and here it will be, I think, let me uh, get the calculator. So it will be 1.6 times 3 here, still it will be 8. So now 1.6 times 5, you are going to get there 8. So that means your mole ratio will be 5, 8, then you check only your elements. If here you are having maybe element uh, X and element Y, that means it will be X5, Y8. That will be your empirical formula. So kindly note that. So if you have 1.5 here, you cannot round, make it 2. You have to look for the simplest multiple that can give you a whole number, which is 2 in our case. You cannot multiply here 4. If you multiply here 4, it will be 1.5 times 4. 1.5 times 4 which is, will give you 6. And here, 1 times 4 will be 4. So you're having a mole ratio of 4, ratio 6. Still, you have to simplify it by 2, then by 2. So it will be 2, 3. That will be your empirical formula still. So, number 5, we are told the empirical formula of an organic compound is C1H2O1. If the empirical mass of the compound is 30, find the percentage elements or the percentage composition of the elements in the compound. So you're given C12, which is equal to 1, that's the RM of the, of the elements. So here, it's not must you to be given the empirical mass. You can get the empirical mass on your own by just knowing your compound, the empirical formula, which is C1. C here is a carbon, which is 12, balas, 1, which is for hydrogen, times 2 hydrogen that you can see in the formula, balas 16, for oxygen 
This one will automatically give you 30. That's how you are going to get your empirical mass. So for us to get now the percentage of the elements in the compound, the percentage by mass of the elements in the compound, or the percentage composition by mass of the elements in the compound, we are supposed to take first of all our element. The first element is carbon. So I write carbon. So I say, how many atoms of carbon do you have? I have one. What is the RM of that carbon? It's 12. So over the RFM of the compound, that means the empirical mass, which is 30, then you multiply by 100. You look what you get here. So 12 divided by 30 times 100. So here we are going to get 40%. That's the first one. Next, we are having hydrogen. So we ask ourselves, how many hydrogen do you have in that empirical formula? I have two. So that means 1 for the RM of hydrogen times 2 divided by 30, which is the empirical mass or the formula mass, times 100. So here, I'm going to get 2 divided by 30 times 100. So here, I'm going to get 6.67%. So the last one, that element is oxygen. So I can do the same and see how many oxygen you have. I have one. The RM for oxygen is 16 divided by the formula mass or the empirical mass times 100. So here, what am I going to get? 16 divided by 30 times 100. So here I'm going to get 53 point, 53, 53, sorry, 53.33 percent. Okay, you can confirm whether you're correct or not by just adding all this percentage. They are supposed to come 100 percent. And obviously, they will become 100%. If you want to get this oxygen, what you can do is you say 100 minus, you can say this one, or you say 100 minus, minus, in bracket, 40 plus 6.67. This will still give you 53.33%. So, next, we go to the extended question. We have three questions for extended question. We are having question 6, 7, and 8.